Welcome back to the Accounting Guys YouTube channel. My name is Blake, and today I'll be talking about packing slips and going over how to make sure they're not causing any bottlenecks or buildup in your system. Brian will be your trainer today. Hope you enjoy. This is probably one of the most common errors we see when we're working with a new dealership who has an accountant that's not familiar with the system. And if you're familiar with one of our earlier videos about revenue and cost of goods sold, Lightspeed takes care of all of those accounts, what gets pushed to, to revenue, what gets pushed to cost of goods sold. And packing slips is the way that the system receives the parts in and creates the invoices for you to pay. And what happens is the accountant sees parts payments coming through the bank statement or the credit card statement, and they just record that to cost of goods sold. And so that ends up doubling up the expense on your books. And so this learning the packing slip process will help resolve that and it will actually make the bank reconciliations more smooth and quicker because it's going to provide that information and there's a lot less guesswork as to what was a part versus what's just a shop supply or office expense. And so first let's talk about the parts section. So under parts, when you're ordering a part, parts are gonna go through ordering and then once the part comes in, they're going to go into this receiving screen and they will say, I did get this many of this from my order. And as soon as they hit that, it's going to make its first accounting entry in the system where it's going to debit parts inventory, increasing inventory, and it's gonna credit parts purchases, which is your packing slip liability account. And after they've received it and that accounting entry posts, this is when it turns over to the accounting department. And we'll go under payables and parts packing slips. When you first click on this, it's automatically gonna open up to the suppliers that have an open packing slip, something that needs to be worked on. It, there's also a checkbox here that you can click on so you can see a list of all of the suppliers that are inside of your system. We'll go ahead and open up this packing slip to Tuck Rocky. And you can see we have multiple receivings that have happened. And we've got one for 25, one for 25, one for 325. Now, in this screen, you can make some adjustments. You can say over on this right side, they actually charged me freight for this, or they have a discount for this. And in order to get a, our invoice total to match what is on our packing slip. Uh, another common error that we see within the parts department is they're taking these freight adjustments and these discounts and they're adjusting the parts themselves in the receiving screen instead of receiving them through at their proper values and then having it adjusted on the accounting side. Freight and discount should be happening on the accounting side. So what, once you've got this correct and it matches your total, then you can click on new invoice, put in your dates for when you want your entry to be made, and down at the bottom, you'll see the accounting will take care of itself. So here's our parts purchases account for where it's pulling out that payable, putting it into accounts payable, where you could go ahead and hit pay now at the bottom to record that as paid or hit that as save. And it will have your invoice and your pay invoice screen to pay when you get your part statement to come out. Now we're, let's go back and say, what if we don't know what was included in this invoice, this packing slip here? We're not sure what it is. My packing slip number doesn't match up. You can click on this adjustment button once you have that line highlighted and it will take you to a report that will show you what parts have been ordered and been received and who did it, what time of the day did that happen. So that's a very useful button to use as well. Sometimes when you're in here, you're going to see packing slips that are zero dollars. That might mean that they made adjustment to parts or to old purchase orders that just needed to go away. Anytime you have a zero dollar packing slip, you'll just select it. And then there's a little button up here in the top left corner that is a delete button that will be what you'll do in order to remove that from this list of open packing slips. So in Lightspeed, we, we already showed you here where Tucker Rocky, when we clicked on this button and we hit the new invoice, that brought us to KTM Parts is the vendor. And you might say, well, that's the wrong vendor. That's not who I bought my parts from. And that's because of the mapping inside of the supplier. So let's go ahead and look at that supplier. If we go to Parts, Lists, and Suppliers, we can find Tucker Rocky. And in this bottom right, the middle right section here, it tells us what is our vendor whenever we click on that invoice screen. And from what we find is a lot of the parts managers or the, 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 the parts people, they don't understand when they set up the supplier step that they also need to come over into this section and choose these categories as well. So it's a good training piece for your parts managers. This top section, supplier return, 
you want to always have this on accounts payable so that it or accounts receivable you don't want it on the no accounting entry section the second piece is the vendor you want to choose so we can hit this little eraser to get rid of the old vendor or we can hit the binoculars to find tucker rocky um, and if it's not there then somebody will have to set up that vendor in order for you to uh, assign it to the vendor to the supplier now let's say the parts person isn't able to finish this setup they, they weren't able to communicate with accounting get that vendor set up and so they can leave it blank when you come to the packing slip screen so we'll go ahead and delete this here and when you go do a packing slip for that supplier it's going to say you need to associate this to a vendor so then you can go ahead and create the vendor associate it to it and then it will continue to go towards that vendor but it's a good a good call out here for your parts people to understand when you set up supplier make sure they take a, a extra second over on this ordering and receiving options to make sure that the vendors associated to it and that accounting is turned on and another tip here is we like to see on the accounting side we want it to match the bank statement so it might say Tucker Rocky but maybe when it comes to the bank it has another name or the statements coming in with another name typically the vendor we want it to match what's posting through the bank account versus their their name that they as the parts people know them by just to make that a little bit easier for accounting one issue that we tend to find pretty common amongst our dealers is they'll have a supplier that is set up as a miscellaneous supplier because they'll just do a one-time order from one so from one supplier and they don't want to have to go through the hassle of setting up all of the different steps in order to order that part through we suggest that you actually do create a supplier, whether you do start from a typical supplier, like one, one that's common to the business and you hit this duplicate button and then you just change the code, change the name. That's really all that they need to do. But on their end, they need to understand if you just use that miscellaneous bucket, once it pulls through packing slips or to the accounting side, they don't really know who you got that from. And so it's hard for them to account or to make sure we didn't double pay for the same parts or that we, we know where the money is going. You're missing that reporting of knowing, well, we, we paid this much to these suppliers throughout the year. And so it's, it's important for your parts people to understand that so that they create suppliers as they're ordering parts. Uh, and Lightspeed is a database. That's what it's meant for, is for you to have a large list of people for, uh, that you order from in order for you to get the information you need to do the job a little bit better. All right, so that's it for packing slips. Again, the, the parts are received through Lightspeed. It automatically creates the invoice for you to double check the numbers the, and then turn it into an invoice to pay. We suggest that packing slips don't uh, shouldn't be in that screen for longer than a week. If you are having a problem getting packing slips that are just continuing to age or you're finding that process difficult, please feel free to reach out to us. That brings us to the end of this video. If you have any trainings or videos you'd like to see in the future, those are our favorite videos to make. So go ahead and leave those down below in the comments. If you'd like to get in touch with us or schedule a one-on-one -on -one training with a dealership specialist, our contact information is in the description. Thanks for watching.